slow-moving hurricane Dorian causes devastation in the Bahamas. And in sport, West Indies need a miracle to avoid another heavy defeat to India. I'm Ricardo Robertson. This is Caribbean in 10 for Monday, September 2nd, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. So if we have to think a moment and allow ourselves to come back to normalcy or come back to our senses because oftentimes, you know, in this natural content of the flesh, we're drawn to do things of the flesh that are not God's way. Okay. And you know, and like, you know, we'd like to say, for instance, if someone is taken away from us before that time, you know, and you're sitting there, you're praying and praying, and when God don't answer you and save that person's life. Our guests today who are joining us to talk about this new phenomenon, it is a phenomenon. Yeah. It's all over the world. It's not just in Las Vegas where we are today. So Matt Terrell, welcome to the show. You're the studio manager at Orange Theory. And Scott Kramer, you're the fitness coach. How did you guys learn about Orange Theory? Uh, I learned about Orange Theory about five and a half years ago. But uh, one of my personal trainers uh, was asking me to help him to, to you know, help people in pre-sales. In, in the Bahamas where Hurricane Dorian continues on its devastating path. The hurricane was still lingering over Grand Bahama Islands today with catastrophic winds and storm surge that forecasters warn may cause extreme destruction. And as you see in the video, um, this happened after devastating the Abuco Islands as a Category 5 hurricane with maximum sustained winds as high as 185 miles per hour and reportedly causing deaths yesterday. Now, although Dorian has weakened since then and is now a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds near 155 miles per hour, residents have been warned that it is barely moving as it sits over Grand Bahama, creating a life-threatening situation. Now, the core of the hurricane is expected to continue pounding Grand Bahama through much of today and tonight. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says it has received reports of severe flooding in many areas, but rescue efforts cannot begin until the weather permits. Residents are being advised not to attempt to leave their homes and to move to the highest point of their houses. At 11 a.m., Hurricane Dorian was located 30 miles northeast of Freeport, Grand Bahama, and barely moving westward at one mile per hour. But the Abaco Islands have been the worst hit so far. At least one person has been confirmed dead, and there are unconfirmed reports of several other deaths. Now, many residents are appealing for help after their homes were completely destroyed or left without roofs. Some communities were left underwater, vehicles overturned, and some buildings practically flattened. Now, earlier, MP for North Abaco, Darren Henfield, reported downed power lines and fallen trees. He said he will lead a team to assess the damage as soon as the weather clears. From all accounts, we have received catastrophic damage along the, the front strip from Marsh Harbor, Dundas Town, Murphy Town. We're uncertain of what's going on, especially at the moment. We have been informed that Cooperstown was holding uh, quite well. That's all that we know at the moment. We are about, as soon as this wind subsides a bit more, the wind and the rain, we will go out and have a cursory look. We have uh, reports of casualties. Uh, we have reports of, of bodies being seen. Uh, we cannot confirm those reports until we go out and have a, a look for ourselves. We want to say to the citizens here in Abaco who uh, in the impacted area, it is not safe to go outdoors. Power, power lines are down, uh, lamp poles are down, trees are across the street. It is very dangerous to be outdoors if you don't have to be outdoors. And as the destruction in Abuco unfolded, an emotional Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said it was probably the most sad and worst day of his life. He was particularly worried about Abaco residents who had refused the voluntary evacuation announced last Friday. 
Minister told reporters that while the government does not have laws for mandatory evacuation, draft legislation would be taken to Parliament at the earliest opportunity. The Prime Minister also called for political unity, telling Bahamians it is not time for red or yellow flags, but to work together. As a physician, I've been trained to withstand many things, but never anything like this. We're facing a hurricane, Hurricane Dorian, that one that we've never seen in the history of Bahamas. Many had remained behind, and still there are individuals within the western area who, had, who still refused to leave. I can only say to them that I hope this is not the last time they would hear my voice. And may God be with them. At least one regional government has already started mobilizing aid for its CARICOM neighbor, Dominica, which is still recovering from the pounding it got from Category 5 Hurricane Maria back in September 2017. They have announced it will be providing 100,000 U.S. dollars to the Bahamian government. Deputy Prime Minister Reginald Austere said the region or Reginald Austri said their country would also uh, offer to assist children of the Bahamas in their education. But he said a meeting would be held later in the day to discuss a more comprehensive package of assistance that could be given to the people in the Bahamas in these trying times. It will be very vivid in our minds that just two years ago, under two years ago, we were facing a similar challenge. And uh, the Bahamas was one of the first countries to offer us some assistance and we believe that this is an opportunity not for us to reciprocate but to act on humanitar humanitarian grounds and to offer whatever assistance we can within our limited resources. The government stands firmly behind the government and people of the Bahamas during this dark moment. The Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has been in touch with the Prime Minister Hubert Immins of the Bahamas to personally express his solidarity and his support. And stay with us, your Midday Sport is next. Exemplary Seema Kimar Roach narrowly missed out on a hat trick, but beleaguered West Indies were left needing a virtual miracle on today's penultimate day of the final test against India at Sabina Park in order to escape another heavy defeat. Now, set a mammoth 4 68 for victory. The home side lost both openers cheaply, Craig Braffitt on three, and John Campbell on 16 to stumble to the close of yesterday's uh, third day on 45 for two, still requiring further. 423 runs for victory. Now, West Indies' highest successful runs chase in tests is 418, achieved 16 years ago in Antigua against Australia. And we get more of that story in our major newscast at 6.30. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon.